We have a remote. Okay. Show me how to do. Off and on. Just let you do this. No, oh, I don't do that stuff. I have no to worry about it here. Likely to do it right. Too much pressure. Too much pressure. No, don't give it to me. Yeah, give it to the guy in the middle. You get it'll, it'll go here. Yeah. Besides, I have a lot to do here. He can't hold it. I'm not saying. All right, let's go. Go in the camera. Go ahead. What's that? I have a request. When there's a request for a right away grid for a grid bin co op to set some monitoring wells right there. I don't know. I, no, I don't think so. That they're trying to track. I don't know what they're trying to track. It's a fertilizer or, or what? Yeah, it's a pollution source. I think they're trying to track. But I don't know. It's well, they have some if it's nitrates, they don't have a map here. Yeah. yeah, they sent a picture of that. We're going to, and that's a little stipulation. Oh, I want to make sure wow. they're clear on as we'll set it back up against the edge of the right away. It'd be pretty permanent for the wall, though. Yeah. Yeah, so they'll be just like my guys here. Yeah, six or seven. East. Yeah. Yeah. North. 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 Ah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> see, see that hand with an arrow? See why you come with your one hand. That helps. <laughs> Um, that makes, a little, that east, makes a little if, more if, sense. If, if it was going east out of town, it would be, it would be out of our jurisdiction. <laughs> I see it. We don't have to rub I, it in. I'm not. Just helping. You got to point it in the right direction. That's the way you handed it to me. Oh, so that's your fault. Just fell. I'll make you both feel well. I'll second that motion. Okay, it's been moved and second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. That's it was going east. It's probably a septic in the city. But uh, this is fertilizer. Yeah, well, yeah. well, you just draw a long days of the road or what? Do you want now? Where, where are they going to be located? Then? Right right on the back edge of the right of way. Okay, so, so it's like our long edge road all the way down north or then? Yeah, on the back, yeah, on the back side, the back on the back side. Do you need something? Do you need like that? Need it? I need side. No, you need side. Another network. Let's try it again. Uh, had a couple issues with the machines. Striking machines are too <laughs> I don't think you have to be concerned about the rain. No. Then you sign both things. The ceiling's all done, and we are going to shoot the uh, Is this third one need to be signed as well? Yes. Three? CQS down there on that. The yellow road. And of course, that's around the corner, so I'm going to make sure we can do it through that. Okay. Is there anything else?
now it's all bent together. I don't think the wind blew that hard. We're putting a new one up. Well, when you drive by, look at it. What do you do down there? I don't know. You people are rough on stuff. We're going to have to have a special assessment. I guess when I put, I guess when I put, Ooh, yeah. I guess when I put a monitor out there and... Or a drill cam. Oh, uh, drill cam. Older than Brand new stuff. Darren. Yes. We're good. I have been busy with the state. Um, we have finally got approval to dig uh, approximately nine months from the start of this. Um, I have done nothing but slow it down. I've done everything they asked, jump through every hoop, and I'm still jumping through hoops. Um, our Terracon, our engineering firm, has been dealing directly with KDHE, working with them back and forth. Permit modifications, updates. Uh, as of today, we will have every single duck in line. You have legals, permits, this. But Terracon has incurred quite a cost of uh, dealing with them. Uh, he came out last week and met with me, the engineering consultant. Presented me with some drawings, blueprints that the contractor will have to work off of. Uh, contractor plans on coming out October 3rd. I don't, he won't be digging right away. Is our bid still good? Yes. Yes, bid still good. Um, I've got a letter yet here I'd like you guys to read. Was there any changes through all this process and what we're going to do? Uh, a bunch, yes. Um, basically, I mean, the changes, I mean, there's many. Uh, and it's, well, it's costed, it's from cost of the engineering out so much. Um, Consultant brought out a folder that was probably the thicker than his full of uh, additional stuff he's had to do with KDH. Um, as you can see at the, on the letterhead there, there's some advantages to where, I mean, like it says at the bottom of the paragraph, design modifications could extend the CD life by 20 years. Um, those are benefits we won't see right now. But uh, with all this additional work, we've got re-permitted, uh, modified for later on. I'm talking, you know, when this new cell is dug in full, instead of having to move. You now, see, what the state wanted to do was take our C and D. We've got two C and D pits out there. The one I'm working in now, and the one prior to that. Um, the state, Mike wanted to, the permit manager, Mike some engaged, and he wanted to close the pits. And Terracon went to bat and said, hey, we, we don't want to close it. To, to close them, it costs thousands of dollars to close a cell. And that means uh, when you close a cell, you, you bring in 18 inches of uh, uh, certain permanent soil uh, clay, is what it is, not soil of clay. That has to be compacted 18 inches to put on top of that. And then you have to put 12 inches of uh, subsoil on top of that and seed it. And once that's done, once you close the cell, you're done for life. You can never do nothing. You can't drive across it. And uh, by not closing those cells, it saved us. And you can see here, in the future, you're looking at $60,000 of savings. By not closing them, what we can do, go to CND1 after this cell is, this new cell is full. There's five feet of cover on it, the uh, interim cover. You can go in, we can remove five feet of that for the full length of that cell, and that would buy you about eight to ten years uh, to fit. Then we're also permitted to, later in the future, you know, this is like years on down the road, to have to up and move our facility, which 
is a major huge cost. Um, you know, we're going to have well over 140,000 probably in this project by the time it is done. Um, uh, but being permitted for in the future, and all this legality and everything is taken care of and locked in now, we can go above grade if, if choose to. So they'd have to move the window over top of all three. Up to so we'd have to move, up to would have to move the facility. Yeah, I mean you're looking and, 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 you know adding another you know that it take 20 years basically is what they kind of just an average uh, 20 years of so we're going to and come top all three things. So, but if we went through right now and had closed them, that option's gone. Uh, 20 years per cell or 20 years total. 20 years total. So, so you're adding about 30 years to the life of this building. Yes. The life of this. Not counting the cell we're digging. Yeah, not counting the cell. So, we're what, what's your problem with the cell we're digging? What's the guesstimate coming um, out of the Well, with no bad weather, no mechanical breakdowns or anything, there are about two weeks. I mean, how long do you think it lasts to get completed after you get the, how many years? Oh. Guesstimate. The, the life of the cell? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, about. It were 15, 20 years. See, I've been at this cell that we're in now. Um, I've been with the county 17 years, and uh, I think that cell was started when it's that's lasted 15 years, approximately 2015. To so 20, we're looking at depending on the weather. 50, 50 years better down the road than we were. Yeah. Yeah. Providing regulations and change. Yeah, they change something down there. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I, I tell you what, this has really been a learning experience. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm gonna ask, yeah. Start I mean, you know, and I, I've, I've been talking for the last nine months with uh, Paracon and the state, and you know, and I asked him, I said, you know, I asked Mike some commitment. Uh, I said, you know, I told him we're incurring quite a cost here, and, and you know, I mean, there's a lot of regulations that I had no idea of, and, and which I do now. But I asked him, I said, well, how have we, he said, basically, he said, there are several counties in the state that are just kind of basically in limbo or yeah. floating along since all the regulations changed in 2006. And he said, well, basically, they, they, I mean, you can just skim along and get by until you actually need to, like, we need to So once, once you contact KDHE and they come in and they basically clean the slate and come I mean, they got you over there. They're going to update you and get you in compliance. Whether you want to or not, yet. and I even asked him, I said, "Hey, what happens if I just want to have you done this?" You know, I mean, it's a bit a lot cheaper. If I just done it, yeah. They said, "Well, you know, uh, we wouldn't have made you fill it in, but for every you put in there, to the point that uh, we discovered you dug a hole, you're gonna take it back out." Oh boy. Yeah. And once this cell is done, even I mean, um, I've got paper in this talk. I'm starting this project. And I've got uh, stuff you guys can, I've got extras of this. If you'd like to look through this sometime, let me know. I've got copies of this stuff. Um, like right here, this is my, uh, this is a requirement that uh, Terracon put together. This is our SWPPP, it's a college school. It's a stormwater pollution prevention plant. This has to be in place for a year to start. This is to prevent stormwater during construction, after construction. Um, okay, this is uh, the requirement for perimeter work. You know, this is just going to be, it goes all the way down to the, the nitty gritty of, uh, on my operator's plant, how everything is going to go. Uh, perimeter burn, they want a 16 foot wide perimeter burn around this pit. Has to have two to one slopes, four foot wide at the top, and that has to be seated. Uh, anything you disturb has to be seated. Any dirt spot piles have to be seated. They have to be, the contractor knows all this. Uh, silt fence has got to be put in place around the perimeter burn until vegetation is established. All the stock piles have to have silt fence around them. I've got drawings if you guys ever like to look through them. It's got uh, blueprints of where all the Storm water prevention, that's what the insurance So, how much would we pay your home already on this project? You know? uh, approximately $21,000. Yeah, uh, about $30,000. Uh, 
yes. And then there's also, you'll see at the back, back of that. Uh, and, uh, seat 28. That's what I don't So we're going to pay way more for the engineering than we are to dig the actual lot. Yep. The side lot. That's just the, uh, let's see, we got dirty construction. Uh, Kirk and Michael will come out and do the CQ. And that's going to cost about approximately 9000 That's shooting elevations while they're digging. And basically spearheading the CQA. CQA is construction quality assurance. Uh, the state will be on site. Uh, CQA is just to see that the contractor is digging to the right depth, uh, right width, making the right cuts and shooting elevations as they're digging. Once the pit's dug, the cell bottom has to have uh, the, the three chest holes for soils. And a lot of that is in these books here in the design plan of, uh, of the pit. Uh, the pit floor has to have a certain soil stability as to how you design it, which is designed to the water will slope to the center. We're going to bring in sand so that the water will slope to the center and, and leach. I see down at the Reno County, how they put those, those uh, cells in, you know, there for the salt blades. Spending out a couple million dollars, I think, just to put the cell in. Just to well, uh, sell the shop, I think, around that there. And, 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 and their engineering costs down there, I see, is, uh, it's like $300,000 just to put the cell in. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. 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 Um, yeah, that's, that's These are files that Terracon had put together and brought out the other day when I met with him. This is my facility operating plan, which has been updated, changed. There's a lot of changes through it. This is my design plan for the pit. Uh, like I said, I've got additional copies of these if you'd like to flip through. Um, so when you say start date, it's going to be on this start date? Um, October 3rd. October 3rd is when the contractor will be out. He's going to have to do some stormwater prevention stuff first, which is uh, putting down silt fence, or he's going to put a stockpile of dirt. He'll have to have that place before he starts digging. Uh, this closure and post closure plans. This is the CQA, which will be spearheaded by uh, Kirk and Michaels. Um, I got all this. Um, but if, we, if you cross all T's bill with the state in there, we shouldn't have any problems. Then no. we, we're good to go. No problem with KDH or anything else. Um, Clayton, I got a, an agreement with Kirk and Michaels. Um, Terracon's payment for the cost. 50 years. Um, 50 years, yeah. Um, um, and he said to have to this size, just keep it up here, bring it down to her, 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 bring it down to her.
<coughs> we don't have that choice, really, so I... No, I understand. I think the motion would go ahead and pay, what, Terracon or... Terracon and then... In that is nine thousand dollars to go to Kirkland Michaels for the other cover. That'll be separate from that. Kirkland Michaels yeah. 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 so This is just on. the scope of what you know. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to get a different bill from yeah. Yeah. We'll be getting yeah. we'll get the later on. We'll get the thirty-seven four hundred from Terracon, yeah. and then, then we'll get another nine thousand estimate yeah. nine thousand. Okay, you made the motion to pay Terracon. Yeah, yeah, I'll say. Okay, it's been moved and second. All favor say aye. 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 Motion to carry. And they won't set us up bill in. Yeah. Did you read that back page from Sterling? <laughs> I skipped that. Okay. I didn't think that much. Maybe make it a larger type and larger spaces where you can make a signature. Well, they brought, when uh, he presented that bill and brought me all the work he's done, he did give me a hat. Oh, well, <laughs> that was nice of him. There you go. That yeah, makes it all better. Well, I did get a hat out of the bill. It's kind of like a co-op. Uh, I was talking to Philip last week, and uh, he had asked me about uh, e-waste. When was the last time? It's been about three months since I took a load of e-waste. And uh, he said he was talking to a guy that, from Edwards County that uh, since the last time I was there, I guess they're going to start charging for e-waste. I'm going to talk to Jill Nichols today uh, in Rice County, with Rice County Works, and find out what the cost is. So we've been, been able to take it and drop it off for free. Uh, but I'll, I'll find out the cost of getting rid of the e-waste and do a comparison of the cost of recycling versus the cost of you mentioned it up, throwing a trailer on the coach. And you know, it's just like, that's the way you go with it. Recycle and pay to get rid of it. Or, and um, on the recycling, I've, uh, I was contacted by Pratt. See, we've been taking our, our goods to Pratt where they bail it. They charge us a small amount to bail it. And then it goes from there on the harbor and gets marketed. And we've been receiving them. Check better to four months. Spring and then we're from a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars. Is probably the most we've ever gotten, but uh, you know it's better than nothing. But he contacted me and said that uh, they were get, taking twenty three percent, I think, right off the top. And uh, Pratt was uh, telling me that they're thinking of going off on their own and want to know if we would still be willing to bring our stuff to Pratt. So the only change was I mean. We, you know, we may get more money out of our waste, our recyclers. Yeah. Recycle, well, of course, they do it for a great band. You don't take anything for a band No. No, well, I, you, I've got one item that Pratt does not take me, that's my plastic bag, and I get a lot of it. You know, when I get a load of that, I'll take it to Fairbairn. It's about once a year. Because Fairbairn is the only one that will take me to Walmart plastic bag. The only change is, is they're going to, uh, I haven't heard back from him. He was going to do some checking. He used to take three of them, but uh, then we started having problems. Find someone that loaded and they had. Yeah, that's I mean, they're way started. behind. It takes quite a while. They don't even have a, a loading ramp. You back your semi trailer up here, you have to use a pallet jack and bring it all out by hand, manual. And, uh, uh, and, you know, we wouldn't get anything for it. But, here we're getting something for it. You can get in and out and you're out of there in a couple of hours. All right. But I'll, uh, I'll get back with you on uh, what I find out on the English. But, and, uh, I told the guy at Pratt County, you know, I mean, we'd still be able to take our recycles there. Mm -hmm. uh, do the same thing, basically, but just get more money. All right. Thank you, and good luck. Thank you. <laughs> take you outside. Take me outside. Oh, just him. Oh, no, just him. Don't you want to go out there? Probably. Yeah. Just your little sidewalk right there. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah.
Do you have much, Steve? Uh, not a heck of a lot. Go ahead. No, Are go you ahead. in a hurry? You're good. You can go. No, he can go. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go. <laughs> Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Okay. If you did five, that'd be great. I'll try. Oh, yeah. There's a request from uh, Tom Parr, the sheriff's son, for who had done that in the past, so he's uh, had a, uh, an emergency permit. And we haven't had any problems, so. Okay, I'll make those to approve the emergency permit for Kellen Parr. Second. All in favor say aye. This is where he's a driver? Yeah. Okay. Where he puts the lights on his car. Oh, door. Oh, okay. Uh, we uh, we received the. Carry. We're pretty efficient. We received the, the new escape and uh, traded in the red pickup. Uh, really, we did the striping here in town. It looks really good. It's got a small red and small blue stripe along the edge of it and with an emblem. And uh, that little unit is already getting 25 miles per gallon versus 9 to 10 with the white truck. So. I think just in fuel consumption, we'll reap the rewards of that. Um, we're going to do the radio and light installation ourselves to save some money there. The uh, emergency management conference, uh, we got two credits for exercises on that, which, which we needed. That was what I attended at Topeka a week or so ago. And we should be receiving some emergency management performance credit funds. I don't know what those would be because we haven't gotten them in the past, so we'll find out. I'll give you the heads up on that we do receive them. Just a budget update. Uh, Fire-wise, we're 8% over our budget for salaries, but our overall budget's only 41%, so we're taking good. But we are at 50% overrun numbers for fire for this year already. Fire Act grant. Um, we had put in for a fire act grant for a uh, bunker tanker last year for three hundred thousand um, dollars. We did not receive that. We went ahead and rewrote it a bit and lowered it down to one hundred ninety-five thousand. We only matched that five percent, so I can pay for that out of the budget if we should get that. Hopefully, we will. Um, I have some additional information to, to give you on the uh, fire truck, the one that caught fire. Um, I'm going to go back and talk to Jolene because the repair estimate is higher than what they paid. They paid out real quickly, but um, unfortunately it's not near, near what it's going to cost us to fix it. So I'm not sure if they'll give us an adjustment on what they paid out or not. But I'll find out more information on that before I make it. Where's your fix that? Uh, over Jerry's Auto is what's given us. So we haven't had it repaired yet. We well, just we'll get asked. Their estimate is more than what? Yes. Oh, okay. And then it, um, if, if I have five minutes, if I could go in the executive session for five minutes, I'll do that. For non elected? For non elected person. No, we'll go in the executive session for five minutes for non elected person. I second. It's been moved and seconded that we'll go in the executive uh, session to discuss non elected personnel for five minutes. All in favor say aye. 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 We're in session. All right, now we're recessed. Well, you were in he was conversation. In no, I was really. Uh, I'm sorry. I want to say what I was saying. Anyway. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, I just wanted to bring to your attention that uh, starting in October, we are going to start doing the title approving process in our office. The state is shifting the title approving burden to the local level. And so what is that? It, th and this was what I'm bringing up. Um, I'm checking with Jolene, too, for liability insurance be in case any litigation would come about. Because it's basically is what it's saying is once we say all the documents and the criteria is correct on this title, then the title can be granted. So it's shifting. You know, we're basically becoming a... Um, well, I compare it to like abstractors with real estate. We determine if this is a clear title or not. So you have to do the title search and you do all the legwork. Yeah. Instead of Topeka. Right. 
and we're, so if any litigation would come out about, like say we didn't have right all the correct documents and somebody took us to court over it, you know, that that's what we need some liability insurance for. So I'm working with Jolene on that. But I just wanted to bring it to your attention what's in the works. Um, we go live on our new system in December, and we will be down for probably a week. We will not be able to do any driver's license, motor vehicle, or IRP, because they'll shut us down and do a big conversion off of our old system, and then we're going to a new system, which is web-based. That's everybody in the state, you mean, they're shutting everybody down? Yeah, no, we'll see. Shutting everybody down all at once. Wow. Are they gonna let people know that this is gonna take place? <laughs> they tell us they, they are. They did a whole long ways in advance. I figured they would do it like in spots or yeah. Why not shut the whole all state at once? Because well, they all be mad at once, can't they? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> get it all get over with. with it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. Well, they really. They're working with the highway patrol for like people that don't get in on November 30th to get their tag renewed and say they're late. So, and like 30 day permits, what if they expire during that period? You know, well, I'm going out of the country and I won't be back for a year. I mean, how do you not do motor vehicle? So, it'll be very difficult. To so be but in the end, we'll be able to get that stuff all done here. We won't have to. We don't have to wait on Topeka. You'll be able to take yeah. a title and, and issue a new title, or if you if once well, lost once or we say like it's that. approved and all you know all the docu you know supporting documents are correct on the you know then we approve. We click a button, and then the title will still be print at the state. But once we you know click a certain criteria. That'll make the title print of the state. So, so you just take it and send it in to have We won't even send them the paperwork it anymore. Anything, nothing at all. It'll be. What kind of a workload is this going to create? It's causing a lot more workload. Yeah, because when you got to be sure that you have all your correct and, that. and how many we get compensated for that? So, so, so they're still going to have the inspection if you got a car coming in. There's a still the sheriff's yeah. office still do the inspection then. And, and the things that are difficult, like for, here's an example, um, we had an out-of-state title, Texas trailer, if it's 4,000 pounds or under in Texas, you don't, you don't title them. Okay, so we, we know this, we have this knowledge in our head, and we did a transaction. Well, we got it rejected from the state, because you have to have documentation from the state of Texas. That they do. I mean, so even though we know it, 4, you have to document. So we have to send correspondence to the state of Texas now, you know, on their letterhead that trailers under 4,000 pounds. And, you know, that's like, that's when I say, and how, there's so much, how do you know that? How do you, how do you know a lot of this stuff? It's really getting very complex. So, but um, LaDonna is the motor vehicle supervisor. So this will be her position, and so, but no, as far as compensation. Well, whatever no fees are charged, do you get to keep those fees in? Just like always, just like normal. This is a way for the state to push off. Yeah, they're so short you can get up there. Working. Yeah. 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 That's how we solve our budget is make somebody else do it for us. Um, the, the good part about it is um, it's done on a local level, and I think we can keep our records current. You know, we're a small county, but these bigger counties are really yeah, going to be open interesting for them. But um, the, the bad part about it is, you know, oh, come on, Jamie, I know you. You know it's okay. And when, same rule applies for everybody, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I vote for you. Come on. So that's the bad part. When you have to tell somebody, well, we really got to have this. 
And it's frustrating. You come in our office and you don't have the documents you need. You know, I, I know what that's like. So. so I just wanted to bring that to your attention. Um, the state of Kansas has not given us any criteria as to what kind of liability is, issues we need to meet. They say that's just decided at the county level. I wonder what they do. So they're giving us no guidelines to go off of. They said they maybe have one or two litigation cases a year for the whole state of Kansas. So, like if a title was given in air or something. So, it's really kind of minimal. Like I said, us in a smaller county, I think we'll have really good controls on it. And the state also has the ability that if the treasurer's office is not performing well, doing what they're supposed to, that they just have, they can click a switch up at the state and turn the treasurer's office off if they're not being in compliance. So the state will spot check some of our work just to make sure we're in compliance, but they won't do like what they do now. Service work, service those. So me thinking that we should act on this. I'm confused by what he's saying. If we dismiss it, we get it, it's a it, it's still be on the tax. You just don't have to it's because it's our option to decide. Not put a burden on putting a burden on it. We could open it and then talk later. Go ahead. Like dismissing it, we're not. We're not done. No, we're not dismissing but, uh, it. Delay for giving. Dismissing the taxes. Delay. No, delay. 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 Just be in the next process. The next process. So whoever. If they're not brought current. Whoever would inherit her property would have to deal with it. Right. If, 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 so that sounds very reasonable. Oh yeah, that's very reasonable. In other words, we're just not going to deal with it. Just right. dis dismiss uh, the homestead from our tax foreclosure proceedings is always what he's saying. But yeah, okay. Just take her off the yeah. delinquent list. And, yeah, I think that would be appropriate. I do too. Have a motion. I move that we dismiss the homestead from the delinquent tax. Second. 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 Second.
we need to state the property? Yep. Okay. Robin Coker's property. Okay. So uh, you made the motion. Oh, sorry. JD second. And, uh, all in favor say aye. 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 The motion carried. And that's one item. Uh, well, I talked to my mom actually about the Central Prairie RC and D, and she wanted a little more information. I just I can't quite get in my head what they do and what they don't do. But I think I, she's wanting to serve on it. But. Probably the probably be the best person to talk to would be Richard Foster. She could call. Is he the one that's in charge? He's the He's the chairman or president or whatever. Do you still have that email he sent you? Uh, I mean, it kind of explained. Well, I think I got rid of mine. I think I filed mine. I really do. I was looking at the other. I don't really have a whole lot on the RCD. Oh, I made a at home, but I their main their main focus is is the freedom flights. Which is mom? What got it? Got her excited? Yeah, about. she went on that. And that's uh, wonderful. But I remember reading it was a meet quarterly, so it's not a big burden. You meet in Great yeah. Bend, which is convenient for her. And uh, the main, their main job was the food advice, but they have other interests too. Yeah, the rural fire department, um, the feeding the hungry, they do the, they spearhead this meat, uh, deer processing thing for underprivileged, you know, to wear uh, rural fire protection. They were involved in the dry hydrants. Was that a project of theirs a long time ago? Yeah. I think so, yeah. Um, but I think what it, what it was that on his email was that there's no representation on the prairie or C&D uh, from Stafford County. Right. And then I think he just, he's wanting some more voices from Stafford County. Great. So what about the interested? I think, I, yeah. But I, like I say, their main project is... Do we need a motion to put her on, or what, what do we need to do? Uh, you sure she wants to do it, or do you want to wait and talk to her? I want to talk to her one more time. Yeah. Talk to her again, then we do a motion next time. But their main objective is the, is the freedom of flights. I have her call. What's the name? What's Richard, Richard Foster. Richard Foster. <coughs> I think she knows him. Isn't he a preacher over there? Mm -hmm. And I told her that she could come up with some more people that she could think of. If we, it says here three or four from Stafford County. Is that it? Or does he just need three I, or I, four from the general? He, I, he stated he'd like to have three or four from Stafford County. But Thinking of Steve Freach, aren't you? Yes, I am. I don't know what he would do. Wouldn't have to answer. Well, he did, he was very much involved. Yeah, he, and, you, 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 did you want to yeah I did, and he just was so excited about the whole prospect that I think that he'd be worth asking. And he's from you know St. John, this area. I, I'm sure I could find somebody up there, but I'm kind of overrepresented as on the borders of this. I think that somebody needs to come. From St. John or Stafford area. Of course, man. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, 
Well, that pictures of the you know, pieces of large trees of large trees. And, 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 so we can get them from anywhere. Right. That's right. <laughs> and I and I mentioned it to some people in the Hudson area, but I didn't get a response back. I don't know. And I just assumed actually come up with somebody from around here. I just think, you know, I've got I mean, I'll ask around. I'll ask around here too, see if those places are better make people have somebody. We have some make people that move to town. <laughs> and you both, you all have your um, KAC frustration. Did you get one, Roger? Yeah. Okay. So if you want to go, I did you need to get those. One of the topics is the 800 radio system. Yeah. Maybe you got to go to that. Right, you're not going. To KAC. That's business season starts that day. Is that right? Yeah, it is. I got, I got dollars coming. Is not right. Yeah, that's so pretty stupid it on there. Yeah, it is. To the radio thing, you go to the question. feral pig invasion. <laughs> I might do that. Serious? It's going to be good for you. It starts. I'll go with my brothers and start shooting his pigs. It's, it's not. Well. It's not opening weekend. It starts on Monday. No. Actually, I think Gail might have about a five-day vacation plan because there's some basketball games going on. Does this start on Monday? Where is this at? So I think oh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. You're going to have to come feed my cat. There was a lot of grumbling going on. There's what? There was a lot of grumbling going on. I don't have anything scheduled for November. I can come feed your cat. At least a week. Range burning. But isn't the plaza, isn't it down there on the old Kansas fairgrounds? What did they do with those fair deals? It's all businesses and constructed. They just build it up. They don't have a fair anymore. Right? No. We had there for 100 years. All that property. Are we still in session? Yes, sir. Well, we're in session. Well, anyways, you want to go? We need to get that. We're in session. Anything else? All right.